Hi, I'm Kyle. Today I will show you how to make a freehand painting on a model, even if you are not a good painter. I will share with you some secrets, of which artists often take advantage, but you don't notice that in a finished painting. The model I will use to show freehand painting is this ancient Zoat. I have converted it to hold an Eldar banner. The banner pole is here, but I am yet to paint the banner itself. This is what will be the subject of my freehand painting tutorial. Why would the Zoat hold such an artifact, you may ask? Well, I will explain this at the end of the video, once the banner is ready. Before I start painting, I need my canvas sorted out. I begin by creating a banner template from a normal copy paper. This allows me to fiddle with it in an iterative process, to make sure I get what I want in terms of size and proportions. The banner will have two sides. It will be more resilient if I glue back and front together of it painted separately. Once I'm happy with the result, I measure the template and recreate it digitally. As it consists of rectangles only, it is quite easy in any software that allows you to operate in centimeters or inches that is, not just pixels. Why am I doing this step? First of all, it will be easier for me to print the template rather than copy it with a pencil. But there is also another reason. I will show you a true freehand painting in just a minute, but I wanted to give you first an easier alternative. You can simply copy a design on the banner in your computer, print it and call it a day. If you prefer, you can use a line art design and color it later with real paints like in a children's coloring book or something. You can see me here cutting out a fragment showing a lion killing a boy from a picture of a Bronze Age artifact found in the British Museum. I did this for some of these dwarf banners as well to a pretty neat effect. Nowadays I use a decent canvas-like paper you could also use to write to your MP if you are concerned about the freedom of speech. But okay, enough for this easy road, let's finally get to doing a fully free painting. Now for the first great reveal of a forbidden secret. Inventing what to paint is much harder than actual painting. A lot of great artists just sketched their ideas and other painters in their workshops filled it with paints. The likes of Albrecht Dürer and Johannes Vermeer were even known to use mechanical and optical devices to speed up the boring painting process. So, if you don't feel like an artist, feel free to use a ready available design. Drawings in this book in particular were meant to be used in such a way, so there is nothing naughty about copying them. I also often use objects and drawings that are more than 100 years old, so there are no problems with copyright. Old encyclopedias and places like the British Museum in London or the Pergamon Museum in Berlin are great sources of elements for your collage. I have also benefited a lot from taking pictures of various architectural details during my voyages. Now for the secret number two. You are not supposed to paint freehand completely free. Just prancing around the canvas like a special snowflake unicorn with a rainbow up her tail. Most great artists did a preparatory drawing of their paintings first. Often correcting mistakes or even repainting some parts. For example, x-rays showed that the Lady with an Ermen by Leonardo originally held a slightly different animal that was later repainted by da Vinci himself. Probably because the original creature looked too obviously like a penis. You can google it. Anyway, feel free to fiddle with your preparatory drawing. Start by general placement of objects to get the proportions right and then work step by step on details. You can even use ruler to get 
the straight line straight, no shame in that. When I am happy with the pencil draft, I fix it by drawing over it with a marker. Remember you will be able to erase simply all pencil work when you are done drawing. It is slightly more tricky if you are doing a preparatory drawing on a surface other than paper, like the Space Marine banner. I uh, previously used uh, simply a black marker to do this, but nowadays I use mostly simply grey paint in place of the pencil. It is easy to paint over, no problem. And now the final secret of the trade. Freehand painting to the level you need is the same as painting a model. You first block the color areas with a basic paint and then you go to shading and highlighting. It does not need to be as prominent as on a model, several touches of lighter and darker paint will do. Remember again that you can paint over your mistakes. You don't have to get it right with one go. And that's it. The finished banner looks like this. At the beginning of the video I promised you an explanation of why would a Zoat float an elder banner with such a pride. So here is why. A long time ago, in an edition far far away, Zoats lived peacefully in the lush forests of the old world of fantasy and on various planets of the 40k universe. Then suddenly vile tyrannids appeared. They biochemically enslaved the poor Zoats and made them fight as their vanguard. It seemed that they are doomed to eternity of narcotic servitude. But then Eldar outcasts emerged from the webway and attacked the Tyranids, freeing many of the Zoat kind. Having no longer a home to come back to, numerous former slaves swelled the ranks of Eldar Corsairs, searching for a new place and purpose among the stars. Some of them even lived happily ever after. <laughs> Thank you for watching, I hope you found these tips useful and remember, have fun with your hobby.